It's February 24, 2012. Um, it's a few days now before the Arizona and Michigan primaries. Um, Senator Santorum has at least a chance of winning the Michigan primary, and if he wins the Michigan primary, he's a really good chance of winning the Ohio primary. Now, many Republicans, particularly those the media call mainstream Republicans, say that Rick Santorum, while an honest and upright politician, a good family man, a person stands by his principles, they believe that he is unelectable. They find that Santorum has taken too many strong stands on social cultural issues. They find his demeanor to be both upright and stiff. And they find his personality to be a little too earnest, a little too grim, a little too unyielding. In many ways, of course, they may be right. But the mainstream punditry may have missed something very important, the electoral map. Needing 270 electoral votes to win, President Obama won 365 electoral votes in 2008. But Santorum, as a G uh, GOP candidate, immediately puts two states in play which the GOP has not won in a long time, Michigan and Pennsylvania, with a total of 36 electoral votes. Now, Romney might put Michigan in play. It is, after all, his home state. But it's a little bit hard to see how a Romney nomination puts Pennsylvania in play. In any instance, with a Santorum nomination, Obama will find that he will have to fight to move his total electoral vote above 329, which is an okay total, but not nearly as comfortable as 365. A Santorum candidacy, with a emphasis on both Catholic orthodoxy and evangelical commitment, and his blue-collar appeal, could also tip the balance in the cluster of swing states which went for Obama last time. Iowa, New Mexico, Minnesota, and most importantly, Ohio. These states carry with them 39 electoral votes and reduce Obama's margin to 290. This, in turn, tightens the race considerably and means that Obama would have to spend more money and more time in these states than he was presently expecting. Now, Obama's victory in North Carolina, which was somewhat unexpected last time, with its 15 electoral votes, is very likely to be overturned by the emergence of a genuine social and religious conservative who has a manufacturing policy to boot. A Santorum nomination might very well mean that the Obama team would simply have to write off North Carolina or spend enormous resources there. This vote shift would put the president at 274 electoral votes, and for an incumbent, the race would become almost unbearably tight. Finally, there is a brace of outlier states where the election would probably be decided. Nevada, Colorado, New Hampshire, and Maine. Could a blue-collar social conservative carry these states? Well, no one knows. And their outcomes might well depend more on Obama's weaknesses than Santorum's strengths. But with these 23 electoral votes up for grabs, Santor Santorum would only have to win Nevada plus one other state to become the next president of the United States. Notice, by the way, that the above scenario concedes both Florida and Virginia to the Democrats. In short, a Santorum candidacy may well remove the need for the Republicans to spend heavily in two states where, to be frank, they are going to be outspent anyway, freeing, therefore, GOP money to focus on winning the evangelical, blue-collar, and Catholic states. The Obama team, I know, may be licking their chops over a Santorum candidacy, but they probably should be careful what they wish for. A Santorum candidacy will very likely push the Obama team much harder than a Romney candidacy would.